this proof-of-concept video an attack against the Oracle Native Network Encryption, which is the security protocol used when connecting to Oracle databases, is demonstrated. This attack allows hijacking authenticated cryptographically secured connections and thus gaining access to the database with the privileges of the targeted victim user making the database connection. The security vulnerability exploited in this demo attack was discovered among other security weaknesses earlier this year during a SIS research project by our IT security expert Moritz Bechler and reported to Oracle according to our SIS Responsible Disclosure Program. The reported security vulnerabilities have already been fixed by Oracle in the July 2021 critical patch update. However, as we are going to demonstrate, there are some more additional steps required to fully address this security issue in actual deployments. More details about Oracle Native Network Encryption in general and our identified vulnerabilities are available in our corresponding paper and the two SIS security advisories SIS 2021-61 and SIS 2021-62. Now to the demo setup. On screen, you can see three terminal windows. The upper right one shows our Oracle database server, the lower right one the unsuspecting victim, and the left one the attacker. The used Oracle database version is 21.3, which is an already patched version running within a Docker container. But if we have a look at the server configuration, the parameter allow we crypto clients is not set to false. Allow we crypto clients is a new configuration option introduced with the security patches a couple of months ago. Still, this configuration is among the strictest native network encryption configurations possible before the patch as it requires mandatory encryption, checksumming, and the allowed encryption algorithms are modern ones. First, a database connection using the older version 19.6 of the Oracle Instant Client is shown. In principle, it should also be possible to perform a handshake downgrade attack against the newer Oracle Instant Client versions, but for the sake of simplicity, in this proof-of-concept attack, we demonstrate it with a pre-patch version. The client configuration is also rather strict, using mandatory encryption and checksumming. A client connection to the database server succeeds, and we can have a look at the table named My Secrets, which contains some very, very secret data. Now we are going to redirect the client network traffic to a machine in the middle proxy of our attacker. In this demo setup, we use an IP tables rule to redirect the local network traffic. Otherwise, one would need some network level attack to redirect the traffic in order to gain a machine in the middle position, or could potentially use TNS listener poisoning as well if the corresponding Oracle database server has a vulnerable configuration. The proxy server software used by the attacker in this attack scenario was developed by Moritz Bechler during the research project. It features decoding and manipulating different aspects of the Oracle Native Network Encryption network protocol, for instance concerning handshakes, and implements corresponding crypto and machine-in-the-middle attacks. Now we instruct it to perform a machine-in-the-middle attack against the Diffie-Hellman exchange performed during a native network encryption handshake and to later hijack the connection and inject some pre-recorded queries. Now the victim connects again to the database. As we can see, this time, the network connection reaches the attacker-controlled proxy, which in turn connects to the specified target database server. Initially, there is a TNS handshake that is not shown here in the proxy output. 
followed by that is the native network encryption handshake. By observing this handshake, we can see the suggested security parameters by the client and the chosen ones by the server. In this case, AES-128 for encryption and SHA-256 for integrity checks, which are then both enabled. Besides decoding the native network encryption traffic, the attacker proxy replaced the originally transmitted Diffie-Hellman parameters, performing a classic Diffie-Hellman machine-in-the-middle attack by splitting the key exchange and negotiating a separate key with each party independently. This allows the proxy server to handle further encrypted and integrity-protected network communication transparently for the targeted database client and server. From this point on, the network traffic between the client and the proxy, as well as between the proxy and the server, is encrypted with Diffie-Hellman-derived keys known by the attacker. The following network packets contain data concerning application-level handshaking, negotiating representation, and so forth. Afterwards follows an authentication exchange using Oracle's proprietary O5 logon protocol. The current version of our attack proxy does not support the proper decoding of these packets, therefore we now see mostly raw data in the output. This O5 logon protocol also derives a session key that is only known to the original client and the server as they have a shared knowledge of the user password or password hash. Thus, this session key is unknown to the attacker and can only be recovered if the corresponding password is known. After the authentication is completed, a new session key is supposed to be derived from the Diffie-Hellman and authentication keys in order to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks. But this is where things go wrong, as Moritz Bechler found out. Because the server does not actually enforce this key change to a new session key for further communication and still accepts the previously generated Diffie-Hellman key. Furthermore, the Java client implementation provided by Oracle relies on this behavior and thus never change the key. The instant client does actually switch to the new session key and would expect further network communication to use it. Thus, the attacker proxy cannot continue to communicate with the client as the password for deriving this new session key is not known as mentioned earlier. However, as an attacker, we can just ignore the communication to the client resulting in a timeout or disconnect it, which will ultimately cause an error on the client side. But concerning the communication to the server, we can now send arbitrary queries, which are encrypted with the initial Diffie-Hellman key. The current version of the developed attack proxy does not support decoding those packets yet, but the SQL statement within our database request and the very, very secret data within the server response can clearly be seen in the proxy output. Thus, in our demo attack, we could successfully access the database with the privileges of the targeted client user and retrieve sensitive data. Depending on the privileges of the targeted database user, other operations like updating data or using administrative functions are also possible. As noted before, the Oracle Java client implementation does not perform a key change. Therefore, not only hijacking a native network encryption connection between such a Java client and a database server is possible, but also permanently staying in a machine in the middle position, for instance, using our developed attack proxy. As the Java client originally relied on the insecure behavior concerning the key change, it is absolutely necessary to update all Java client libraries. Otherwise, Java clients cannot longer connect to a database server once the issue is fixed. An update of native Oracle Instant clients is recommended as well, because there were also some other security issues regarding native network encryption that Moritz Bechler found, 
which were addressed in newer software versions. Furthermore, in this demo attack we have also shown that it is not sufficient to update effective database servers by applying the provided patch, but that it is necessary to update their configuration as well. In order to completely prevent the kind of demonstrated machine in the middle attack, the newly introduced security parameter allow we crypto clients also has to be set to false.